Ladies and gentlemen, Hebrews and Shebrews, welcome to the Life Podcast. I'm your host, Luke Abafi, and today we're talking with my brother Thomas and his wife, Vanny. They're young. They're, Thomas is 14 years younger than me. And so we are going to talk about Gen Z, and that's his generation. We're going to talk about getting married young, because they got married when they were 20. And I actually performed the wedding ceremony, which we don't get into, but I did. We're going to talk about coming into Torah as a mainstream Christian when you're dating a Torah guy, and that's the case with Vanny and Thomas. And we're going to talk about abortion and pro-life uh, and pro-choice arguments because Vanny works at an organization called Created Equal, and they are a very effective pro-life organization that goes out and uses what they call victim imagery, which is the images of the aborted babies the murdered children um, to make people realize what abortion really is. Besides abortion, we're also going to talk about social media, cell phone usage, what should Gen Z do to start like getting their numbers up in the, in the whole dating world and in the marriage world. And without further ado, I present to you Thomas and Vanny. Thomas and Vanny, welcome to the Life Podcast. Thank you for taking the time to be here. Thomas is my brother and Vanny is my sister-in-law. And we're going to talk about their lives, about coming into Torah, and about Vanny's work and the way that they met, which is um, going to touch... It's all about abortion. It's about the topic of abortion. <laughs> yes, that's right. How did you guys meet? We met on a spring break mission trip, I guess you could call it. It was a trip to Florida where we were doing activism, and I guess we'll get into that more. But it, it's just a big trip full of high school and college age students and full of mostly Christians or just like-minded believers. And yeah, we met on that first initial trip, and then we came back the next spring break, and that after that trip was where the initial <laughs> interest began. And then um, I moved to Columbus, which is where I, that's when I started working for Create Equal. And um, I was much closer to Thomas because I grew up in Mansfield, which is about an hour north of Columbus. So it was, we were like two hours apart yeah. when she was living in Mansfield. Yeah. And then when she was living in Columbus is when we started dating. So we were about an hour apart at that point. Yeah. And we met each other, like she said, through mission trips for the organization Created Equal, which is where she's working now and has been since then, which yeah. we'll go into more, I and, assume, a little later. Yeah. And then when we started having that interest in seeing each other a lot more because I was closer, I would come and see his family on Shabbat every Saturday. And I had <laughs> no idea what I was getting into, I guess, but... <laughs> What did you first think of, think of all this, all the Shabbat stuff? And what did your family think about it? Well, first you, yeah. and then we, we should talk about your family and your dad and everything. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was very curious, and I, I didn't learn, like, every single detail all at once. I kind of, like, it was little by little where I was like, oh, so, like, we're just here all day and we don't do it. like we're it's not like two hours of church and then we go out to eat afterwards it's like a whole day thing just like that's how it was for you guys but right there wasn't like a regimented we're yeah do this and it was an, on a half hour saturday this. yeah and i mean all i knew is that i liked him a lot so i was doing whatever i could to impress him and the family too <laughs> um but i was still like learning a lot because i i didn't know exactly that you weren't about not buying on shabbat so i think i was coming and bringing i think maybe i made guacamole and i bought chips on the way there and i didn't know <laughs> but i was just like oh i need chips i forgot to buy chips and then slowly talking um hearing the discussion every single weekend i was learning and that was kind of a whole challenge in and of itself of dating someone that I really liked but him having such different beliefs yeah. and questioning you know like is are these beliefs like 
since it's just it's all brand new to me I'm like is this like immoral or something <laughs> but once i like but you learned about didn't it didn't you pray about it and about yeah. the relationship and about tell him what you okay said because you okay. mentioned this to me before yeah so because i liked him so much i was worried that maybe because i liked him so much i may be believing something that's not biblical yeah. so i prayed um Sorry, the cat is climbing up in the window. That's that sound. It's not Thomas, like, fidgeting around with his claws. Um, I, I was battling this idea of, like, trying not to let my emotions about who I liked get in the way of my biblical principles I follow and stuff like that. That I wasn't just going to accept this these weird things. <laughs> different things just because I liked him. I wanted to make sure it was real and not going to be something. So I, I started praying that if this was something that was wrong, that God would get like, help me lose interest in him or have him lose interest in me. Um, or in a way that I could be a witness to him to get out of this if it wasn't right. And it, that, I mean, obviously we ended up getting married, which is great, but every single weekend when I'd come and I'd have questions and I'd ask him or ask you because you were leading the Bible study, I, my, I was stumped almost every time because I'd be like, well, what about this situation or that? Or we'd it'd just come up in our discussion and I was like, huh, like that makes sense. That follows God's word. So I felt like God kind of answered those prayers where I was like, if it's wrong, help, help us help to it. fizzle out and for me to see something and then maybe even witness. But through that, I changed my mind quite a bit. Was that scary and weird being surrounded by all these people that believe this at least slightly different way? And then you felt like, oh, well, I have this other th thought and belief and I hope it wasn't intimidating and I'm sure it was, because how could it not be, I suppose? Yeah, yeah, in, yeah, in ways, because um, everyone was so nice. I was like, how <laughs> are they, like, all, like, believing something crazy? <laughs> I don't know. Um, but Are they drinking the Kool-Aid? Are they all, like, killing? Yeah. Were you ever, like, are they doing sacrifices in the oh, back? No. <laughs> Where's Dinesh? I was, yeah, I kind of was looking for the holes. Or correct. I was like, where... David. Yeah, Koresh. No, That's what I meant. no. <laughs> it's Koresh gonna pop out. I was looking for like holes in the theology to like maybe be like, okay, this is too glaring of a problem. I need to get <laughs> away from this. Um, is but there anything close some to of that? it, some of it, I was familiar with, oddly enough, because my parents, before they split off, they didn't celebrate Christmas years ago um they do now but that was something that i knew like that was something they um wanted to follow when they first got married was no like christmas trees no christmas at all and then also my whole life my dad never ate pork so that was something i didn't know that yeah he just and i remember because i was eating pork uh, but i'd be like why don't you want to eat bacon dad he's like have you <laughs> looked into what like how disgusting they are, and I was like, whatever. So it was mainly the health, yeah, the health uh, risks or the health factor behind his. Yeah, his not to. That, that's why he didn't eat pork. He didn't mostly. think it was, and he doesn't think it's sinful. Yeah, not for all the. I mean, that's definitely a big part of why we don't. But it's also because un, biblically unclean. But just little things like that. Um, hmm. It's interesting. Like, so you already had like a little bit of a preview of that through your own parents. Yeah. That wasn't that foreign to me. And some of the things were just like definitely new, but once they were explained to me and I like, cause I remember I was trying to come up with reasons not to do this too. Cause I selfishly wanted to do some of these things. Yeah. I wanted to, I wanted him to take me out on a date on a Saturday night or <laughs> like, you know, or I was or like, Saturday. Friday, yeah, yeah, Friday during night, the day, Friday like, night. yeah. yeah. So how eventually did you kind of start to think, well, maybe this makes sense just by asking questions and, and not being able to find holes? I would have conversations with either my family and, um, or my coworkers who are all believers. And 
they'd have a lot of the same questions that I, I had. And then when I talked to him about it or when we talked about the Bible study, it, it, I didn't find anything conflicting with what the what God's word was saying, wow. so even though really I was trying. <laughs> <laughs> so it really did end up making sense to you on a, just on its face. Yeah, yeah. Which there's a lot of pressure to also n- follow into that just because I'm, I was dating him too. Like, oh, she's just doing that because yeah. she likes him. But I wanted to be very clear with like my peers, like, no. I really do believe this. Like it didn't all happen overnight and it probably shouldn't have. (laughs) If that was the case, I'd be a little bit of a red flag (laughs) if it did. Like, oh yeah, I'm all into that. But it was a You're not easily swayed uh, outside of your beliefs and that I can attest. And it's kind of reflected in your work. You have to be pretty strong on your own personal beliefs for your work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk about your dad and your family, but maybe we should talk a little bit about your work now and, and about the justice ride that you guys were on. It was based after the freedom rides of the civil rights movement. And how long has Created Equal been doing since, justice rides? Since 2011. So, okay. But it's just the idea is to get the next generation involved um, in this fight. So it, that's why we focused on college and high school students to go out and have conversations. And again, Created Equal is the organization that Vanny works for. It's a pro-life nonprofit and that is where we met because when we were when she was 16 she went on her first justice ride and when i was 16 i went on my first justice ride but it was right before i was about to turn 17. so it was your second ride yeah yeah and we did a bunch of those so vanny still wasn't working there not full time she both just went so it's her second time your first time yeah okay and we're yeah, we like to go to Florida because it's warm that time of year in the spring versus it being freezing here in Ohio. But actually, it's pretty warm right now yeah, in February. Uh, <laughs> but um, we go down. Yeah, surprisingly. I, this is but, about a week-long trip, and they hit all these different college campuses and even an abortion clinic at least once yeah. on the trip, usually. Yeah. So and, it, the students are trained on how to talk to people about abortion. They kind of just throw them out on the campus and say, you know, you, you've been trained, you can do this. And of course, there's staff members there to help them if they have a hard conversation. But it's it's crazy. We were 16 and we were having conversations with college students that sound intimidating, but we've seen many people change their mind from pro-choice to pro-life. Yeah, and it's not as... It seems a lot scarier than it is because when you do get to talking to people, most of them haven't really looked very deeply into the matter. Mm -hmm. And usually you're going to get the same handful of arguments over and over again from just different people. So if Mm -hmm. you and also the case for life is pretty darn simple. (laughs) If it's if it's a human being in the womb, uh, then it's wrong to intentionally kill an innocent human being. Um, so it's pretty easy to train people because the subject matter isn't really in depth. And usually you're going to be having the same conversations with the, the detractors, whoever you're speaking with. Um, so yeah, they have kids as young as 14, right? Yeah. That's mm -hmm. come on the trips. And I mean, we, yeah, we were 16 and of course our, probably our first day out there, we were a little intimidated, but Yeah. yeah. Once you're talking to these students, you realize they're saying these things, but they don't even know what they're. It, they just, don't actually believe this because they can't defend it. Yeah. So with the little training we had um, and then more experience, that's part of the training as well, the experience of talking to people, we were able to like really just make them question, like, why do you believe this? Is it because you really believe that it's a woman's right to choose over someone else's body, this little baby inside their womb? Or is it because your friends have told you this is what's cool to believe and... If you don't, we'll kick you out of our friend group, <laughs> essentially. Nowadays, um, if you go against the status quo. Yeah. What, can we get into a little bit how you, how Created Equal trains kids, kids really, 14, 15, 16, yeah. 17, however, to, and I, you know, 
of all different personality types where some people more outgoing some people less mm -hmm. and they're all able to deftly by the end defend and make a case for a complicated arg it could be a complicated argument mm -hmm. and of course there's similarity here between arguing for abortion i mean pro-life mm -hmm. and then arguing for torah because it's it's a subject that can be hotly debated, people are passionate about, and it has quite some nuances, or it can. So that's what I'd like to get into, is is yeah. how do you train some kid who hasn't ever had any experience on the street mm -hmm. to, to be able to defend this perspective? And Truth Tracks. The Way documentary tells the story of our movement. This is the story of people who were trading Easter ham for Passover lamb and Sunday church for Saturday Sabbath, all in an effort to live like their savior. It dives into their stories through their own voices and into the history and theology that show how the church got to where it is today. For sure. I think for so, syllogism. Yeah. The person who's getting trained obviously has a passion already. They, they see that there's something wrong with what's happening in our country and our world that innocent babies are being killed. So they have that initial passion and when we explain the basic argument, um, it ties t s like so well with the gospel as well. So it's also cool that we can bring in the gospel at the end. But the syllogism is the basic arg argument where we say it's wrong to intentionally kill innocent human beings. Abortion's always the intentional killing of an innocent human being. So therefore, abortion's always morally wrong. Um, so that's kind of like what where we like frame the debate. And from there, you're going to hear many people bring up all sorts of different arguments but what's cool is that kids who are come from homeschool backgrounds like thomas even though you're pretty outgoing you're not like i got i was public lucky. schooled and i was more like <laughs> terrified to talk to people um even though i yeah i grew up in public school um but when you have that initial passion it you realize that it's more important than like being embarrassed about talking about talking to someone on the college campus like we that's why you see like kids from all sorts of backgrounds being willing to like hey like let's <laughs> let's stop a stranger on the on the college campus or in front of a downtown public square and ask them a really you know odd question which is what do you think about abortion that's how we start the conversation yeah and then if they if they are leaning towards it being permissible after you ask them something like that if their response is in any way saying that they think it should be legal for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. Then you can ask if they think that the preborn is a human. Yeah. Is is there a human in the womb, basically? And then they have to think on that, and then they say probably no for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. um, and then we go into what are the differences um, if they bring one of them up, maybe. And there's a there's a acronym to help you remember SLED S L E D which is size, um, level of development, environment, environment and dependency, mm -hmm. um, which we could brush on real quick. Yeah. So these are the basic four main arguments people are going to bring up f for why it's okay to have an abortion um, or justify the abortion because some people see it as a necessary evil. Um, but these reasons are most what they're going to bring up most of the time. So size saying that because the baby is so small, like it's almost like they're not even there. But if we were to apply that to a born human situation, Thomas is taller than me, of course. Um, that doesn't mean he's more valuable than I am or it doesn't give him the right to intentionally kill me just because I'm smaller. Um, and then yeah, when you say that, it sounds crazy. Yeah, but... Like Katie's not even five feet tall. <laughs> it, it's, it seems like she would actually by this metric, have less value, that less intrinsic value. Yeah. And I mean, I've heard people say it. He has too. They're like, well, the baby's so small. It's like they're not even there. It's like, like Andre the Giant not... is really big. So he's worth a lot more. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's so bizarre. Yeah. It's like if you were to apply that to any born human, yeah, it'd sound crazy. Um, and that's what you see when we break down all these arguments. Same thing with level of development. That's a huge one. Um, because the baby doesn't have consciousness yet or these certain 
things that you get through development. I mean, yeah, and all the all of that is still there even after they're born. Yeah, it's not your your new child is very small. Yeah. And um it's not as developed as your older boys. Mm-hmm. Or as and they aren't as developed as you. So it doesn't have any relation to intrinsic value yeah. I think of the human. Yeah, and I think it's important to remember that they're not supposed to yet. Like they're supposed to be that small. They're supposed to be <clears throat> at that point of development inside your womb, they're not supposed to be walking, talking toddlers yet. Like, why are we faulting them for that? They're doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah, it's not like they're having a, they're not having a developmental block. They're just not supposed to have those abilities yet. So the level of development argument from the pro-choice side is this being isn't able to operate on its own, so thus, yeah, and sometimes what is, it may be like, well, they can't feel pain yet because it's so early in the pregnancy. It's like they haven't defe- developed that ability. But it's yeah. like, okay, so if you kill someone completely in a painless manner while they're asleep or something, I don't know. I mean, it's still unconscious, yeah. killing someone, whether they feel pain or not. So that, that doesn't yeah. matter. Their lack of consciousness. Consciousness. Thing, is not why, why are those things like determine your value? They don't. They don't. Because everyone is different. We all have different sizes and stages of development. Like you could be mentally handicapped or you could be in a coma. Precisely. And usually in those situations, people are have more sympathy for somebody who is mentally challenged rather than less. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, they're not as developed as me, so they're worth less. No, it's like, so we should protect them more. Yeah. But we don't look at it it's, that way when it comes to the child in the womb. Yeah. As a, they're as a seen nation. as a burden um, and as a reason... Because of that, it's like more of a reason to intentionally kill them in that view. Yes, yeah, so it's it the, the opposite the opposite way of viewing things than we have normally. Yeah, that's like one of the biggest ones that you're going to hear because they're not as developed as... How is it phrased when they say it to you? Um, often they'll say um, that they don't have consciousness yet. Or yeah, that's frequent. Or um, that... And that implies what? How, how will they say? They'll say, the baby doesn't even have consciousness. Yeah, they're not thinking. They're not feeling. And again, a newborn baby, you know, doesn't have the same level of consciousness. Or, you know, if Thomas has been up for several hours, lo- like, and he had a cup of coffee versus me if I just rolled out of bed, our consciousness is different. Like, if we were to just or always... sleep. It's always like a spectrum. Or you're knocked out. Yeah. <laughs> they think, well, they haven't ever had consciousness yet. That's yeah. another thing they might say is, well, they haven't even had it once. And it's like, well, why does that, why does it matter how many times you've been conscious? And so the implication is that because they can't feel or understand what's happening, that, that, that you can take their life, right? Yeah. So yeah. the whole sled thing is to try to funnel people into realizing that this is a human and it all comes back to you're killing a human. Yeah. Cause yeah. that's what really matters. So we can, like sled is a great tool to use and you're often going to hear those things but it does always come back to what are the preborn? are they human and if they are you know how do we treat like why are we treating these humans differently than us so 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 size level of development let's do the other two yeah environment so based on the child's environment that they're less valuable (laughs) and it kind of sounds crazy and you can get a ninth month (laughs) abortion now so it could be fully developed in the womb and the difference is that it is in the womb versus out of the womb. Yeah. So just the environment change yeah. gives value. Yeah. Environment doesn't change who you are. It just changes where you are. So it doesn't have anything to do with your biology being different. You're still inside the womb. You're still human. You still have value. It's just... Yeah, that travel not... between <laughs> down the birth canal. Yeah. This brings an interesting, you know, kind of like point for us right now because and i'm gonna pan down vanny because vanny is pregnant vanny is oh. <laughs> how many months pregnant are you nine months pregnant i yeah i'm due this month so yeah that's crazy we're... so technically where in this nation could you currently go and get an abortion um, right now i yeah i think you can get one in ohio now i think right? right yeah i think now you can because issue one in ohio passed this last fall and i think it was implemented in december everyone was who who was pro-life and still voted yes on this was ignorant to the fact that it was a sneaky bill mm-hmm. where where you yes 
cases like that were made or uh, examples like that were made. But the truth is now, as long as the surgeon says mm -hmm. that the abortion should happen, then it can happen up to birth. Is this right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and maybe you have to go to a specific place here in Ohio or because it just passed in November. I just can't believe um, that you can do that here in Ohio now. Yeah. Um, and this happened last summer in Michigan. They were doing the same thing. It seems like they're going state to state now that Roe v. Wade has been overruled. Mm -hmm. So they don't have the federal law. So they're going state to state trying to get laws like issue one passed yeah. so it, that they yeah. can keep abortion legal yeah. for... It, it changes the everybody. state constitution, so it's it's written in Ohio's constitution now. Yeah. So that, it's not just like a law. It's it's. Yeah, it is in our state constitution now, which really yeah. <laughs> is really terrible. Yeah. And I don't know how we can we gotta have it appealed somehow. Well, I just would like other states that are going to encounter this bill, probably a similar, if not identical, mm -hmm. bill, to have the heads up that. Like, yeah, look but... into the fine print. Don't just be dissuaded. I mean, our pro-life side, I think, did sadly not a great job of the signage on this, mm -hmm. where it, it was like for parents' rights, for kids' rights, or something like that. But yeah. it needed to say, you can, you can have an abortion up to birth yeah. if this passes. Yeah. Like, if you want that, okay. At least you're going in informed. But Which yeah. sounds crazy that Ohioans... There's some Ohioans out there who want abortion all the way up to birth, but I think it's less. It's it's not the majority. It's I think people majority. were deceived yeah. on this bill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, usually, from what I've heard, nationwide, the majority of the country does not support ab abortion to birth. The majority of the country, I think, does support abortion with restrictions, like early abortions, which is uh, an incoherent position. It's yeah. either is a human or not regardless yeah. of whether it's first trimester or third but that just seems to be the way it is mm -hmm. um but this this kind of stuff that they're going what well, they they passed in michigan and passed in ohio and i assume they're going to go to other states is mm -hmm. it's like no holds barred where else can vanny get an abortion today also if you let's say you gave birth today the the baby would be fine Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you're due on the 22nd, right? Yeah. Of this month. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like in two weeks or something. All right. So the baby's fully able to live yeah. in the outside world at this point. But technically, I think. So Ohio, definitely. Yeah, and if you don't know all of Michigan, and New York. Like places, yeah, like like California, New Mexico, Nevada. Like they have those procedures um, called partial birth abortions um, because you essentially almost give birth to the baby, but then they, um, cut the neck. Yeah. Graphic. <laughs> um, so it's, it's like, why it's like that baby is full term. Like you could just give birth. And then, um, if you really don't want the child, give it to a family who would love that child. It, 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 can you, in any state, can you give birth and then kill the baby or no? There are, there are times when there's botched abortions where that means the plan is to abort the child and it's born alive. Mm -hmm. So there was a bill, um, the it, Born Alive Protection Act. Virginia was that? Uh, I, I think it remember. was Virginia, but we'll, we'll look it up. Yeah, yeah. I'll but put it on the screen. That, that was trying to be, they were trying to put that in place for situations like that. Mm -hmm. Because without that, that means that sometimes the abortionists would just let the baby die on the table mm -hmm. uh, just by not giving care. So wait, the Born Alive Protection Act is if the baby, if the abortionist fails to kill the baby before it exits the womb. Yeah, and if it's born alive, which sounds like, how would that even happen? But it has happened. And if it's born alive, then sometimes they allow the baby to die or, or right, kill it out. after it's out. Yeah, yeah. So the, yeah. the purpose of them trying to create a bill like that was so that once the baby was born and out of the womb and it was alive, then they would have to give it care. Yeah. It seems insane when you would think of someone holding the baby, a little newborn baby in their hands and then kill it after it's out. So that's where we're going back to the whole environment yeah. of SLED, of the SLED acronym. Yeah. The environment, a lot of people seem okay with having the abortion even, as long as it's in your belly. Yeah. But as, once it's out, then it, well, I think most people probably think that's pretty weird or evil. Yeah. 
At, to say it, it definitely makes them uncomfortable because we've asked those questions to students who say, well, as long as it's inside your body, then it's okay to have an abortion. It's like, okay, well, what, what like, your body, your what choice. if I was, yeah, <laughs> uh, me technically right now, my baby would live and be fine, but would it, would it now be a human if I had an abortion today, but gave birth tomorrow? And that obviously doesn't make sense. And it's uncomfortable to say, yeah, you, you could have an abortion. So... That's why people don't really stick to that argument once we <laughs> make it clear to them. So the, what are what do they bring up in the environment? You know, yeah, what do you say in the environment argument? They say if it's in your body, you can kill it. And then what do you say? What's what kind of examples do you give? Yeah. So like they're like, as long as it's inside your body, it's it's like the same body. That's maybe something you've heard before. Like well, it's they the say mother's my body, bo- my choice. Yeah. But they that's them completely ignoring the idea that there's a separate body. Yeah. Cuz it's it's not even your body. <laughs> Own DNA that from like from conception. From yeah. the point of conception, uh unique DNA, eye colors already determined, Gender. genders, um yeah. hair color, like everything yeah. about the person is like written in yeah. right there at the start. They it's just, just then they're developing from that point on. For sure. They just say that because it's inside the mother's body, it's the same body, which obviously isn't true. Incoherent. Because um, you never look at a pregnant woman and say she has four legs or like two heads or two genders if so she's carrying a boy. It doesn't make sense. So they, they would say, oh, because it's inside the mother's body in that environment, um, it can't survive on its own too. That's what they'd argue if the woman wasn't as far in her pregnancy then it's okay to have an abortion or justified that's her to have one. Survive on its own, that's dependency, which is the yeah, last Yeah, acronym. but Yeah, but when you break it down, again, environment doesn't change who you are. It changes where you are. So really, the fact that they're inside the womb has nothing to do. Again, that's exactly where they're supposed to be. They're not supposed to be outside the womb. Mm-hmm. Um that doesn't justify killing an innocent human being. Always comes back to if they're a human being. Because if it's not a human being, a lot of the arguments could fall apart. Like, who cares? Yeah, a woman should be able to go get a tumor removed if it is a tumor or a tooth pulled if it's, like, causing her pain. But That really is. would be her body, her Yeah, choice. it would be. But when you have a little baby that's been created through sperm and egg fusion it's not just a tumor it, it, it ha- it's growing it's developing into a human being or it is a human being it's it's growing developing so there's obviously a difference between that and a tumor or something cancerous or something like that so let's talk about d then of sled you said it's what is it dependency Tom? dependency so the the child in the womb is entirely dependent on the mother um but I mean, the newborn is still entirely dependent. It cannot yeah. fend for itself. As you know, you have little True. Lily right now, and she needs, you know, her parents. And hundred, hundred all the time. Yeah. Like, if we left her, she would die. Yeah. If we yeah. left her in any state, she would die. Yeah. And Sam is less dependent than Lily. But he's three. But he would more. still die. But he's more dependent than Max. Yeah. And, and that... That has nothing to do with yeah. their worth. And dependency just changes throughout your life. If, you know, we were to, if you were to lose your job somehow, we would be dependent on the people around us to help us out, you know. It, it doesn't change your value, though. There's plenty of college students who are very dependent on their parents to pay for their college tuition. But it, And then when you get old, when you get yeah. old and senile, then you're dependent on your, your family yeah. to take care of you. So your level of dependency changes throughout your life. Or if you become paralyzed from the neck down and you're still totally like, you know, you, you, you know what's going on, but you could be, you would die if people left you alone. Yeah. Like Christopher Reeves or whatever. Yeah. People, you, your generation probably doesn't even know who that is. It's the old Superman. But. Oh. <laughs> well, Thomas's point earlier was so good because when someone's dependent, usually that means they need more attention and more love and care. Like... And that's not a bad thing. You never, it, someone, you look down on someone who takes advantage of someone who's dependent, like a child or an elderly person, like scammers who are calling the elderly to get their money, or if someone abuses a child, 
that child's young and you know like you look down on that and you should yeah, yeah. human nature should be that we should protect those that are dependent that are unable to fend for themselves yes back to the mentally challenged they're yes. less developed they're more dependent but we usually we usually have more sympathy for them rather than less and it's the opposite when it comes to yeah they see as a children in the womb opportunity to take advantage and kill them it's sick it's, yeah even the word abortion kind of hides a little bit of the horror of the activity of killing s someone yeah. in that is helpless yeah. <laughs> of murdering someone that's helpless yeah, it, yeah it's important to call it out for what it is it's not health care <laughs> that's what they want to change they're always changing the language um yeah. to make it seem not as bad as it actually is um it's like abort abort i mean even even the word abort just reminds you of me of star trek or something abort abort you know yeah. it's like pause as if you could now it's like the choice happened mm -hmm. <laughs> the 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 being is created yeah. Yeah. so that that's a, the, that ship has sailed i mean if you want to maintain integrity in my opinion but yeah. you know that's one of the problems that people i feel like who just say they're pro-choice they, they're not really thinking about My what they're default. saying it's like there is a human being that's already created it's not like you're preventing <laughs> like don't we don't like abortion is preventing them to come in the world they're already in the world you know if you wanted that to happen you should have thought about that before you know creating a possibly creating yeah. a child it doesn't work like that they, they're already here the question is you know how do we treat them you know and because they're human, they deserve equal value as born humans, they mm -hmm. equal treatment. Why did you both want to do the the justice right in the first place? What what was the motive? Maybe we'll start with you, Vanny, and then Thomas. What was, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Thomas is similar to this, but I didn't even know what abortion was until I was, I think, a freshman in high school. And it was like, shocking to me i was like what like we live in a world that does this it was just so surprising and i remember um being at the lunch table at school these girls talking about you know if they were to get pregnant they would just have an abortion and i <laughs> wow. i wasn't um very well versed yet i was this was before i was trained on how to talk to people but i was just like what how could you ever do that like do you understand what you're saying that's killing a baby Obviously, since getting trained, I don't <laughs> just freak out on people like that. <laughs> but I was just so appalled. And I remember talking to my dad about it. And I was like, I, I got to do something about this. And then he knew um, of a couple different guys who knew of this ministry in Columbus. And I went on that summer trip. Um, and I, from there, I went on every single trip until I started working there full time and I kept going on trips. This is the first time I'm not going to go on a trip because I'm pregnant, so I can't go. Um, but yeah, I just had that initial passion. I saw that there was something wrong. And once I heard about Create Equal and I saw that I could possibly like do a lot of change, but just by talking to people, that's what's so addictive and kept me coming back because what you're doing is it's changing people's minds and and saving lives it really is because you don't know who that person knows or who they talk to and yeah yeah and a few times you guys have known for sure that you've saved lives because you've been at the clinic and been able to convince women not to go in yeah that's and then part of it i mean from then they try and help them get all the supplies they need to raise that child and get everything together but i mean that doesn't happen as often as <laughs> we'd all we'd like, like it too but, but the point is if like, nobody was there yeah yeah the point yeah. is to be faithful like we're called to you know tell people the truth and even if we change one mind you know a year or whatever that's we're doing our job we're supposed to go tell people the truth even if they don't change their mind or like it or they're mean to us like it's what we're called to do. But usually followers. they have a lot of mind changes and a yeah, lot, yeah. And a lot of and a lot of mind changes that they don't know about because often, um, often people don't change their mind on the spot mm -hmm. on any topic. 
Because whenever you have a stance and somebody's trying to argue against you, you want to stick to your guns because you don't want to believe that you're wrong um, about anything, about religious matters, about mm -hmm. about anything about the taste of food. I don't know. Whenever you like somebody, in your marriage, does when it. you're talking, yeah. it's hard to change your mind or admit that you're wrong. But plenty of times they've had examples of people coming back later. Like Vanny knows that she talked to a guy for a, a long time one day and he didn't change his mind. Mm -hmm. And then on a, on a future day, right? Was it the next day? It was or the week next later? week. He came, he, he, he just came across our display again. I wasn't out there, but one of my coworkers was just talking to him, trying to have a conversation. He's like, oh, I talked to one of you guys last week. And you know, I thought about it more and I changed my mind. In the moment, I didn't want to, but once I actually thought about it, yeah, I, I realized what I was defending wasn't right. And maybe we didn't run into that guy again. Maybe we never knew he changed his mind, but yeah, people change their minds, not always on the spot, but after <clears throat> giving it time. So that's why when you when you talk to somebody about this and present the arguments, you need to, sometimes they'll be very hostile. We've seen a lot of that when we go on college campuses, and Vanny's seen even more than I have, because she's <laughs> done even more than I have, but sometimes people are vile and disgusting and um, just trying to get a rise out of you. And sometimes mm -hmm. people come over and they'll be willing to engage, a lot of people aren't, but they'll start out like hot-headed and you can tell they're huffy. But if you stay calm and you just are rational and you present mm -hmm. things calmly, you don't meet meet their level of ferocity, then usually they'll simmer down. I've seen that multiple times where mm -hmm. somebody will start out a angry and as you talk to them, they kind of slow calm down a little yeah. bit. So you got to you got to you got to be able to be calm. Mm -hmm. Uh in the face of their crazy adversity sometimes. Yeah. Have you ever lost your temper, Thomas, during these things? And how do you stay calm? I mean, how do you, and how did they get people, kids to stay calm? I mean, I... That's a good question. Uh, did you ever hit I anyone? Didn't, I didn't struggle with it. <laughs> I know Vanny said that she had to learn that a little bit, right? Yeah. Um, I wasn't yelling back, but, you know, like, when someone's being really mean to you and you know that what you're saying is right, and it's also like, it's not just like a silly little argument it's like we're talking about human beings being intentionally killed and when people are being mean to you and you're just upset like you think this awful thing like how like it's like the whole loving your enemies you're like you're evil <laughs> i'm good and you're evil and you and you're being a jerk too yeah <laughs> a little it's just there was a time where i really struggled with wanting to have the last word and wanting to have a quick comeback and just kind of stump them and be like, what, what are you going to say now? Like, <laughs> In your face. <laughs> In your face. Um, but that really wasn't fruitful. I realized I was just trying to win the argument, but really the goal should be to win the person and really make them think, like, this is what I'm actually concerned. Like, this is what you're saying. This is what you're saying that you support. And... I think that's wrong. I don't dislike you, even though it's hard <laughs> to like someone it's hard to or like get you right along. Now when you're going at me. Yeah, but <laughs> I think that's when you remember that it's easier to be more loving to these people. Um, so. And something that Created Equal tells the students that they're training is that the two things people are going to remember is what they saw and how they were treated. Mm -hmm. So you want to treat them well, and what they saw is the abortion victim imagery that Created Equal uses. And that does a lot of the work for you because that's probably the most powerful tool mm -hmm. <clears throat> that we have. Yeah. What it's controversial sometimes too. I don't know if we want to explain, that. explain what you mean by abortion victim imagery. So that, that would be pictures of uh, fetuses that had been aborted. So the torn up limbs, um, the faces and hands and arms and toes. Yeah of the children that were aborted, yeah. which is hard to look at. It's not pretty, it's not supposed to be, but uh, it is controversial sometimes, even among pro-life groups, because mm -hmm. they're, they're like, oh, that's not effective, but we think it's the most effective thing. Yeah, we've seen firsthand um, just how sometimes, yeah, we don't even have to do much talking. They just see that image, they see that there's something wrong with that image. 
And once they recognize that abortion isn't just like magic, like making the baby go away, like there's there it's it's bloody, it's gory, it's it's, it's the aftermath that's yeah. not shown to anyone. Yeah, and when they see that, they see abortion for what it truly is, and it makes them question. So it's because of the word partially because of this word abortion, I think, because the, the word is abortion does not convey that imagery. Mm -hmm. And that imagery is the murder of a small baby. Mm -hmm. That's what yeah. the imagery is. It's a kind of the graphic and brutal murder of a small baby. Because you, yeah. you're not just, like, injecting it with, with something. Like, they do to prisoners, like, murderers that are outside the womb that are 50 years old that have killed whole families yeah. and finally get, get on death row. And then they're gently ushered into the afterlife. They're not ripped limb from limb. Their heads aren't chopped in half. Like, that's the stuff you guys are showing because that is what happened. Yeah, yeah. So even um, the abortions that happen when the babies are younger and they don't need um, maybe exactly a forcep or a vacuum aspirator to destroy their body, but sometimes it's poisoning the baby and passing the baby that way. Yeah, um, the, the it, methods depend on the yeah, level of development. Yeah, but regardless the end result it's it, it's killing a little baby but all these abortion procedures are vile and disgusting and when people see that they see abortion for what it truly is and it makes them question their support for it so that's why we must show the victims of abortion is there any case to be made that abortion is not quote unquote breaking the command not to murder is abortion make always breaking the command to murder is it murder yeah, I, I would say so. Um, people who are not religious will often bring up these religious arguments on campus. They'll say, um, what's the one story in the Bible with the, I think it's a sorcerer or something. I forget. Maybe I can't say exactly. Do, do you remember? There, there, some weird... Or, Here's one argument that they'll make that abortion's okay because life doesn't begin until first breath because Adam was breathed into. But that obviously doesn't That's work nuts. because Adam was never inside a womb. He was created and Eve was created out of his rib. So that's not a normal like coming about. Like he his situation is very different than all other humans experience where we all came from our mother's womb where God knitted us. And knew us before any of uh, the, the mother or any other person did. And you kind of assume his heart wasn't beating before that either. Adam, I mean, you, you, you don't think Adam's like heart beating and his blood is pumping and then he breathes into his nostrils the breath of life. You know, yeah. it's kind of, I think it's all at once. Right. Yeah. And you got the heartbeat way early on in pregnancy. Yeah. 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 As early as 16 days, it can be detected. Um, but people, it's just funny that many non-religious people will come up to you and say, well, the Bible says here that it's okay to have an abortion and it's just kind of pulled out of context and you have to explain, um, that that doesn't work. So, you know, there's no case for abortion that's that found in the Bible. So ki killing the baby is murder, basically. Yeah. The only, um, the only thing that people may bring up would be, uh, an ectopic pregnancy, mm -hmm. which would be when the baby is... Implanted in the fallopian tube rather than the uterus. Exactly. Because if the baby continues to develop in the fallopian tube, it won't have the space it needs and it, no. will, it will, will rupture. It will and kill both will mom kill, and baby. It will die and the mother will die. So the point with that is intent. Okay, so abortion is the intent to end the life of an innocent human being. Whereas with removing a child from a fallopian tube is the intent to save the mother's life. And currently we lack the technology to keep that child alive mm -hmm. after you remove it from the fallopian tube. But yeah. you're not going in there intentionally to kill the child. You're going yeah. in there to solve a situation where both mom and baby are going to die. Yeah. And it's sad and it's horrible. And maybe one day we'll have the technology to be able to pull that baby out of the fallopian tube and, and it not die. But yeah. currently it's too small at that stage to keep alive. But you guys wouldn't argue that they should just both die. No, no. no. Save as and many lives as possible. 
And banning abortion would not ban that procedure. No. Anywhere in the nation. So anywhere in the nation, if this happens, it can it will. Is it okay for the woman to... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it's not an elective abortion. That's If we want to be specific, what mm -hmm. we would like as pro-lifers is a ban on all elective abortions. Mm -hmm. Whereas, I don't know exactly what name they would call that procedure, but There's it would not fall it. under remember. elective abortion. Yeah. So you would still be able to... It wouldn't stop that if you had a abortion ban. Do all pro-lifers agree on that? Or do some think that... You should, you should let them both die? Yeah. <laughs> no, I would say... <laughs> not that I know of. <laughs> yeah, I'd seems, question. Because uh, it's not, it's not technically an abortion. <laughs> yeah. It's about yeah. the intention. Um, yeah. Man, this is crazy. This is wild. I mean, we can go so far. Because uh, I want to talk about you guys a little, too. I want to talk about your dad. and I, what, Is there anything else that we should talk about with the pro-life? There's a couple things. Yeah. Um, well, some stats. We oh wanted to gosh. give some stats. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> so in Ohio, as of 2021, there were 60 abortions per day on mm -hmm. average, which uh, is a school bus full, roughly. Yeah, it helps you visualize. That's one child school bus at full capacity. Right. Well, if that bus... Every day, the bus is murdered. Yeah. yeah. Essentially. Okay. But if we were to look at Ohio every single year with their the amount of abortions, that's over 2,100. And that's uh, about 300 20, school buses at full capacity. 21,000. Okay, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so 300 school buses a year in Ohio. And now that's as of 2021. But now in just in the fall of 2023, issue one passed. So it's very likely that that number will increase. Mm -hmm. And if we go to nationwide... There's 2,300 per day on average. Mm -hmm. So over 800,000 per year. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot. And we've had um, over 60 million since Roe v. Wade was passed. Remember, the Holocaust was about 6 million. So this is like 10 times more people murdered than the Holocaust, mm -hmm. which is a tragedy that's cited often for how horrific it is. Um, mm -hmm. My gosh, it's like approaching mal levels of murder. Yeah. It's, 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 it's horrible. It's really, really horrible. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. Did you have anything else on that? Sometimes numbers don't always do justice. So it's good to visualize just, you know, remembering that these are human beings. They're, they're not just numbers. So, uh, if, oh, I remember another thing. 21,000 in Ohio per year is like twice the size of, no, no, no. Wasn't it twi twice the size of Cleveland yeah. population? Yeah. Which is all Ohio based because we're in Ohio. Yeah. You mean 800,000, 800,000 or 21,000? 800,000. So the, so the nationwide level. You're right. Nationwide. It's 800,000. Okay. Because Cleveland is pretty big. But so yes, eight hundred thousand is twice the size of Cleveland. So two Clevelands a year of two babies Clevelands are murdered of... in the United States. Yeah. Okay. My gosh. Yeah. And twenty-one thousand—that's like almost the size of our little town here. Yeah, twenty-one thousand yeah. in Ohio, over eight hundred thousand nationwide. Yeah. yeah. About the size of Chillicothe. <sighs> yeah. Horrible. I guess I want to just touch on the one, the abortion victim photography real quick. And why it's so important to use that because... Yeah, because even pro-lifers will argue against that sometimes. Yeah, there is the dispute amongst pro-lifers about using it. Remembering that, yeah, these are real victims. These these photos of babies are, are real. And that is the only thing left of their existence. It's their only baby photo that they'll ever have. And um, we think that it should be shown because the reality... When, when people see the reality of abortion... Um, it, it changes the way that they view it and changes their actions. So why do people have problems with showing images like that? It can depend because they think it might not be effective when we have seen firsthand how effective it is. But social reformers throughout history have used graphic imagery to change people's minds about injustice. But we don't have problems with that. So whether it's through something more simple like a anti-smoking campaign where you see like really healthy lungs and really <laughs> unhealthy lungs because this person smoked cigarettes every single day of their life for decades. Seeing how it's kind of gross, those, the, the different organs, you know, like 
or or someone who's done drugs and their teeth are all messed up like uh, that's graphic no one wants to see that but that's effective um people have seen how it, it's dropped the if the government didn't recognize that it was effective then they wouldn't force the tobacco companies to put it on their cigarette yeah. packages yeah and M mlk has a quote for this right yeah yeah um when people see the injustice they they understand they have to see <laughs> yes, the injustice to, to understand, understand the, the injustice. injustice. Exactly. And that is true. We saw that, I mean, again, with the Holocaust, those images are what really helped that idea sink mm -hmm. into the rest of the world, what was going on, yes. what horrors were happening. And in this country, too, um, with racism, with Emmett Till, Emmett Till being battered and <laughs> beaten to death for supposedly whistling at a woman. Um, and his, white woman. and his, and his, uh, mother chose to have an open casket funeral so that that image would be seen. Yeah. And that is what really helped spark a lot of reform. Yeah. It inspired Rosa Parks not to get from her seat on the Greyhound bus. She said every time she saw a little boy, she saw Emmett's face, which is a very gruesome photo. Um, but when people saw that they saw racism and it changed the way that they acted. So victim imagery has been effective throughout history, and it still remains yeah. the most effective thing that we can do for the abortion argument today. But These discussions die in darkness. And so if you don't shine a light on the images, mm -hmm. then people forget about it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's the worst thing that can happen because everyone, after they watch this, they in a week they won't remember that eight hundred thousand kids are murdered every year. Yeah. But when they see the images, they'll be like, "That just is wrong." Yes, yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so that's why when we go on to these campuses or public squares, we bring the images. We show people, uh, and our signs don't say abortion is wrong, even though that's what we believe. They just say abortion. It shows what abortion does. It's up to the person to decide. We ask them, "What do you think?" Like when you. When you look at this image, how does that make you feel? And not very often people will say, oh, I like it. Well, they're just being rude and weird. Yeah. But majority of people are like, there's something wrong there. And it's because <laughs> it is wrong. It's wrong to intentionally kill an innocent human being. And people get so upset because what we're saying is that you don't have a right to do this. We're, we're showing sin. We're showing what they're doing and we're saying it's it's evil and right. so many people claim oh those images aren't real they're fake cope yeah cope yeah <laughs> it's, it's just cope. like i mean it's not it's not hard to prove that the images are real what, what else would it look like what else what, what, what would a real abortion think, look like what do you think it was going to look like yeah a partially developed <laughs> human is uh yeah. is pulled out of the womb piece by piece with forceps or sucked out with a vacuum yeah what do you expect to see yeah and they they, they want to say that's not real because they don't want to it's easier than it's too painful for them yeah. it's too painful it's too painful to rationalize that side of the, mm -hmm. the argument yeah but some people do come around they do and it may not be right then and they're on the spot which is okay but i mean there's plenty of people who are Christians today that once believed that abortion was okay because they didn't see it for what it truly was and praise God that they came around. What's the craziest story that has happened to each of you out there when you're... Probably the craziest stories are the wild protesters. Um, they're not usually the most fruitful, but that sometimes people will just try and get a rise out of you they'll try and scream they'll try and be disgusting they'll try and tear down signs um yeah attack sometimes they've attacked created equal members before i mean yeah. that doesn't most, happen all the time but mostly our property our signs like i've seen so many of our signs be spray painted or destroyed stolen and it's just if the images weren't that's another point on the images being real if they weren't real why would they care like if they weren't, such yeah a harsh if they weren't reaction. effective like it's because they know it's, there's that's what they're supporting and it makes them uncomfortable but yeah the i guess yeah the craziest things are when 
people really overreact and start getting physical when that's not necessary. And I guess we kind of just, <laughs> we protect people, not property. So we just kind of let them. Have you ever been scared out there? Uh, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. There's days where you're like, gosh, you're surrounded by a mob of people who are just screaming, like literally screaming how much they hate you and calling you evil that you hate women or you're, you're a traitor for, of women. Cause I, as a girl and he gets told that he hates women because he's a man and he has and no you reason. You can't have an opinion if you're a yeah. man. That's common. I've talked to plenty of people who've said, yeah. you shouldn't be able to even have an opinion on this. And it's like, well, do you have an opinion on slavery in America <laughs> Yeah. as a white person? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or it's like, you can have an opinion on that. We can agree that that's wrong. And that was a, yeah. that was a moral failing of our country. Yeah. But you don't have to be part of the demograph the graphic, sorry, yeah. demographic to see that it's wrong yeah it's just so totally unrelated yeah it's so it can totally be unrelated it can be scary when you have all these people around you just being so evil but then you kind of realize like you know what you're doing the reason why they're so upset is because you're doing the right thing you know like god tells us that we are going to be persecuted we're going to be hated and it's not that I like being screamed at and yelled at, but it's just like, man, I am so glad that I, you know, am defending these little babies. And even though it's not fun to be screamed at and yelled at, I'd rather be on this side where I'm defending the truth than I am, like, defending something that's so evil, abhorrent. I'm glad you guys are doing it. I mean, glad. I know you're actively doing it now. It's been, you're, you don't work there, but you, you, you've done this. While, but mm -hmm. she's still working for them as her main job. When people are talking about abortion, what, is, what do they do that's wrong usually? What is the bad arguments that just naturally happen? A pro-lifer gets asked a question. What's ineffective, basically? What have you seen that doesn't work? Well... One thing before we go into what they're actually saying is that I already brushed on before is the attitude of the person talking. You don't want to be, especially if the person's mad or or something, you don't want to match their hostility. You want to be calm and collected and mm -hmm. be able to speak rationally and calmly and not mm -hmm. fiery and mad because that is going to make them lock down and not listen to what you're saying because they're just going to be listen to, listening to how loud you're saying it. It yeah. sounds like that's, that's exactly the same with having biblical conversations. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's probably any conversation. No if you're one, yelling at somebody, yeah. it's not effective. No one wants to have a conversation with someone who's just mean and rude. <laughs> so remember so. why you're having the conversation. You're you're genuinely trying to show them what you're what you think and bring them to your side because you believe that you believe the truth. <laughs> so being and, calm and collected and just asking questions that's something that's really important to do is just ask questions and they can kind of like explain themselves what they think and it can reveal a lot of what they don't know. Like they don't even know why they believe that. Like where'd you get that idea from or why do you believe it? They can't really defend it. So plenty, asking plenty, good questions. Plenty of times they're repeating things they've heard and they're mm -hmm. like trying to put it on you or like repeat something they've heard. I don't know. And if you're just asking them simple questions and it makes them have to think about mm -hmm. things and run through the ideas by themselves instead of just parroting. And, um, I mean, that can be important for them because maybe they've never done that before. They've never taken the time to think about, all right, what do I actually believe about this and why? Yeah. Rather than just repeating a catchphrase. Yeah. Stay on topic. Don't get distracted by maybe things that they'll bring up like what do you think about this current event happening like what do you think should happen in this really i don't know difficult situation if you just stick on topic of you know is a human being do you believe in human equality and sticking to sled those main four arguments you you should be good instead of derailing the conversation and it just becoming going around in circles frequently for... people try and derail and you have yeah. to try and bring it back to what you're talking about 
is this a human inside the womb? And frequently they'll be like, you're not pro-life, you're only pro-birth, and then you don't care <laughs> about kids. Uh, are you adopting? Are you fostering? All stuff like that. It's like, those are all side arguments. Like, we can agree that maybe there's issues with the foster system, um, but has, we're not talking about that. Yeah, it has nothing to do with whether this is immoral or not. Like, like the, the, so what? Like, we could adopt a lot of kids, but that doesn't change... They wouldn't change their mind on abortion. They're just bringing up to derail the conversation. Right. So what if I had adopted f 10 kids? <laughs> okay. I mean, so is that going to change this other discussion we're having? Yeah. No. Yeah. Or often they'll ask, have you ever been pregnant? And now I can say I have, but it doesn't <laughs> change their mind. They don't really care. They just want to say what they've heard from other people um, in their friend group or online. Talk about rape. Talk about the, the everyone brings up rape. Yeah. Can you tell their perspective? What are they saying to you when they bring this rape argument? And then what is your, what are your thoughts on that? What are, what's your response? Yeah. This? They feel like it's more sympathetic to have exceptions for rape because they feel sympathy for the mother. Um, so they will, will they just say, what about rape? Like that? or yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes, so yeah. We could be talking to someone who's like, yeah, I'm, a, I'm against abortion. I don't think it's good. But in the situation of rape... Maybe it's okay. There should be the exceptions. Yeah. So the first thing we want to clarify is that, you know, we totally, like, are against rape. We don't support <laughs> it. Like, it's, it's a horrible, horrible thing. Like, make that clear with them. Because honestly, you don't know who you're talking to or what they've been through. Maybe they know someone who's been sexually assaulted or they themselves have. Um, so you want to make that very clear. But also, we want to point out that there, the three people in that scenario is... The victim, the mother, who, and then the, the child that's been conceived, and that man. Oh, those three people who deserve to be punished. They would say the man, right? The, the rapist deserves to be punished. Yeah, but usually the rapist isn't even getting a death sentence these days, but the innocent child in the womb would be? Yeah, so then we could ask a question, you know, is it okay to intentionally kill the child for the father's sins you know does that seem right to you and they obviously are like no like that child is not their father they didn't do it they're just the result of it they're completely innocent so why is the child being killed for the father's sins um and once they see it through that lens they're like oh yeah <laughs> why are we why is that happening the, the the rapist should be intentionally killed not the innocent child yeah, and removing the child from the equation doesn't un it doesn't remove the trauma of the rape. Yeah. Honestly, usually abortion just adds more trauma to women. Um and and also again, the the means of conception, whether it was out of love or violence, do not determine the value of that human that was created that's in the womb. Cuz you've probably met people before that were conceived out of rape. I met a mother when I was on a campus who said that she conceived a child out of rape and she did not abort him and she loves her son. Um, so, I mean, mm -hmm. when you look at a born person that was maybe conceived out of rape, I mean, that they're still valuable. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter how horrible it was what their father did. Mm -hmm. um, they shouldn't be punished and they have just as much value as the next baby. Yeah. And it's also human. important to remember that those cases, those hard cases of rape and sexual assault, those those are less than 1% of abortions. They're not common. They're not, praise the Lord, it's not like what's happening, but that's not the, the majority of the people getting abortions. It's out of, you know. So, so, so yeah, sometimes when you're discussing with someone, you can sidestep it at first. You can say, I'll come back to that and we can talk about the case of rape. But you know that's less than 1%. So even if I agreed with you and we had exceptions for rape, would you say the rest? 99% should be, should be illegal? And they'd probably be like, no, that <laughs> yeah. should be legal too. And it's like, okay, well then let's talk about that first. Yeah. Let's talk about why yes. you think it's okay in general before we talk about this very tiny percentage of cases but that's yeah. common with every time you're talking about hotly debated topics usually the extreme edge cases is what they'll bring up first in order to 
divert yeah. from the main argument. And they won't always say, what about rape? They'll say, so you want women who've been raped to carry a child a term? It's like... Like, no, I just <laughs> like, want them not to kill the child. Yeah, yeah. It's not... Like, I'm not making... I'm not. They're yeah. saying you're forcing women to carry that child. It's like, no, I'm forcing women not to murder. We're saying you're just not allowed to intentionally passed. kill the child. That's that's it. We're totally, yeah, against rape. That's horrible what happened to her. We sympathize with her on that. But that doesn't justify her intentionally killing her innocent child. Because, like I said, a lot of people who say they're pro-life are okay in those those situations but yeah the biology doesn't change when the situation or circumstances change it's still human it's interesting these 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 fringe cases that are brought up whenever it's a hotly debated topic it's just i have to bring it back to the torah everyone often often will bring up a fringe case of against torah when you tell them mm -hmm. that you you know you you worship on Shabbat or whatever. I can't even think of any fringe cases right now other than they're like, oh, so you do animal sacrifices? Yeah. And also, do you, you know, you won't, you put your wife out of your house every month? Like these kind of things. And then they'll, they'll, they'll operate from there. It's the same kind of approach. Yeah, that's a good point. They'll say it that way. They, they'll say, so you think this? Yeah, so yeah, this. yeah. Absolutely. It happens in, <laughs> in a lot of topics but that's that's probably the most common one for yeah abortion You're, we hear it every rape. single time we step on <clears throat> campus that's yeah. going to be the biggest thing i love how created equal has made the sled acronym and figured out how to train the kids to to be able to properly address all of these crazy questions and events and i wish that we in the torah thing had a an acronym as well so that we could also say okay so basically anyone out there that's watching this that's smart think of an acronym figure it out and put it in the comments so that you could help everyone else out i've thought about it, i haven't been able to so we want to address you know shabbat food laws feast days zit zit Anything else? I mean, like Christmas, Easter, that kind of stuff. So go and figure this out. Go forth and create an acronym and then give us a defense. Flesh it out. You can email me, whatever, but make that happen because it's it's needed. It's needed. Then we can, then anyone can be trained to be able to like defend their faith. So, all right, let's shift with that diatribe. Let's shift gears to the Torah and let's shift gears to you guys just being a young couple you're both 23 mm -hmm. yeah but not for much longer <laughs> you're almost 24 you've been married since you were 20 mm -hmm. yeah we got married right after we both turned 20 yeah. in 2020 <laughs> <laughs> we're 2000s babies so it's pretty easy to remember are you gen z yeah we're gen z um and do you think what do you think of gen z and then what do you think of do you think the Torah will help Gen Z? I guess is what I'm trying to say. I think anything based in reality and and not these crazy ethereal ideas and these crazy horrible movements of the present would be good for Gen Z. And probably all of the generations, but mm. the culture is has moved Probably this is something good about the Torah is that there is so many uh, things applicable to your everyday life, whereas there's plenty of churches that have gone with the tide of the culture. Um, so you'll find LGBTQ, blah, 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 as, as the acronym gets bigger, uh, friendly churches, and you'll find so many so many churches that have just gone with the way of the world so <clears throat> the torah gives you this this measuring stick i know i think you've compared it to that before that it helps it helps you be able to cut the fat away and so even if you're in the christian movement you could be in an organization that has totally adopted the ways of the world that are anti-biblical 
Um, so yeah, it's beneficial for Gen Z. It's beneficial for every generation that's falling into the they're fall they're f- flowing with the cultural tide. Mm-hmm. There's so much compromise out there, and the tour is important because it adds structure and responsibility and just order to chaos. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Have you noticed that, Vanny, coming in? Do you think do you think that do you think it's it gives some kind of foundation? I don't know. From what just how it's affected my life. But... Yeah, I don't know. Yes. I guess you were already pretty <laughs> grounded in the Bible and your belief before coming into Torah as well. That's yeah. good. And there's there's probably Torah principles I had before I realized it was Torah. Like, I, like it's all included. We're Torah observing Christians. And what's your dad think about this? Your dad is Tom Dunn. He has a big, awesome ministry, and he's made a bunch of cool documentaries that everyone should check out. And what's the best place? Through the Black. Yeah, mm-hmm. through the Black. Dot com. com. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, check out Tom Dunn. He's an awesome guy. <laughs> well, what does Tom think of... Because I know that he doesn't agree about the Torah stuff. Mm-hmm. What's... Yeah. what's th- He's friends with a lot of them. He he yeah. knows them really well. He, um, especially when I started dating Thomas, he was just a little concerned because he... There's many different branches and not everyone who is claims to be a part of... Like... The, not everyone <laughs> agrees. Nice. Yeah, not really no. Okay, tell us what he said to you when when he was talking about Tom. You, he knew Thomas was tour observant. So what was his question and his and his advice to you? Yeah, just he he wanted to make sure that he believed that salvation was through Christ and Christ only. Like it wasn't through a works based salvation where you follow Torah and that's how you're saved. And it's just it. I think that's a pretty frequent um, idea that's brought up from mainstream Christians. It's like, are you trying to gain salvation through works? Mm-hmm. That's that's pretty common. But he wanted to make sure that I still believed in gr- saved by grace through faith in Yeshua. Yeah. And because of the work that he does, he often does deliverance. And he'll be casting out demons, but he'll say, you know, in Jesus Christ... Mm-hmm. And he's had people, bad experiences with people saying that that doesn't count or work unless you use. But he's seen it work. And so he knows it does. So that was kind of something that he found alarming. So he was like making, he wanted to make sure that his possible son-in-law wasn't going to, you know. Outlaw the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. In the home. It's like, Vanny, you're not allowed to say Jesus anymore. Yeah. Which, which, you know, there is the sacred name movement that is, you know, has crossover with Torah, if not all Torah. I mean, if, if I, I think sacred name crosses over with Torah, but not all Torah people are sacred name is what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. And sacred name being, and maybe not everyone who identifies as sacred name will say this, but being that you have to say the name Yeshua, Yehoshua, whatever it is, or Yahweh mm-hmm. for like to connect with the creator or his or his son so yeah yeah so he just had some concerns there and then obviously after meeting him and the whole family he realized <laughs> like how amazing they are <laughs> well um, we see him as much as we can and it's yeah. he's awesome we love your family well that's one thing that's so cool is i kind of feel like that was the moment i knew <laughs> it sounds weird that i was going to marry thomas or I was going to be with him was when, cause my dad made some mm-hmm. documentaries and I, when I went to his house on Shabbat, we were looking at movies to watch and all of a sudden on his mom's shelf, I see one of my dad's movies and I was just like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> what? <laughs> like they understand this crazy world of like spiritual warfare. Like this is, you know, very, she was already a fan. <laughs> she was already <laughs> there. And I was yeah, like, already... that is such a crazy coincidence. Who else? Like, who else? Like, I'm not going to find this anywhere else. She knew your dad before we knew each other. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So when I saw that, I was like, I feel like this is going to (laughs) work. I'm glad it did. 
I'm glad. I'm really glad you are sister-in-law, my sister-in-law. So what advice do you guys have for young Christians or Torah Christians? What are your advice for young people in your generation about dating and marriage? Are you glad you got married young? Do you wish you would have waited? <laughs> Definitely not. I think uh, getting married young is wonderful and more people should do it. Uh, I mean, the only thing that Van and I have talked about since we got married is that we could have gotten married even sooner. <laughs> yeah. We dated for one full year and then we got engaged for like another six months and then yeah. we got married. And it's not like a hard rule, like you need to date for a certain amount of time or whatever, but it's it doesn't take, I don't think, nearly as long as people think it does to find out if someone's marriage material. You don't need to be dating for years and living with each other. That's not beneficial to your relationship at all um, to see if you can live with them. It's can I can see myself committing to this person and you know do they believe that Jesus and, and the gospel is first? Yeah. Those things are really crucial. You need to be intent you need to have your intentions in your head going in because you're if you're just going in with oh I just want to have fun because I just like this person I mean that's probably not wise mm -hmm. um, you should say okay I want to get married if you don't if you're not ready to get married you if shouldn't. you feel like you don't want to get <laughs> married then you shouldn't be dating because what's the purpose of dating to find a spouse yeah. that's what it should be at least these days it's not and getting married young I mean if you have found a person that you think you want to commit to and wants to commit to you then do it because if you wait till you're 35 what are you filling those that decade and a half with or more you're just more sexual partners that you're sleeping around with um and making soul ties to maybe um and maybe even fathering or mothering children that that you have out of wedlock or you get aborted i mean that's i mean the every year the average age seems to increase of, of the average age people get married. Mm -hmm. So people are getting married later and later in life. So that's what they're doing is they're filling their life with more years of sleeping around. And mm -hmm. that's not beneficial to them. That's not beneficial to the people they're sleeping with and definitely not to the kids that they have or maybe <laughs> kill. Do you guys feel like you missed out on not having more sexual partners and you missed out on like sex with other people? <laughs> Cause this is what people would say in the world. I've had extended family members say like, why do you want to get married so young? Like, it's just weird. Don't you want to go experience life? Just like, this is the life. Like I'm, I have the best life I possibly could have if I have a husband who cares for me and, and loves the Lord and we can have a family like, it's just such a backwards way of viewing the purpose of our life. First of all, it's to glorify God and having a partner there alongside you and a family to grow. That that's and it makes things easier that, too. Yeah. You don't have to just do your life on your own. You have like a life partner. Yeah. Um and the, yeah, I mean by virtue of not doing it, I guess we missed out on sleeping around, but I don't think that that's something beneficial. So I don't think we missed out on something that, oh, darn, we should have had that because it would only yeah. have been negative for us. Mm -hmm. It leads to heartbreak and a bunch of stuff that's not beneficial. I mean, yeah, there's physical ramifications that could be very bad mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, definitely spiritual. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you guys, how were you able to be that mature? at that age to read to have your priorities in that way like maybe i'll start with thomas on this how, how how the heck were you able to be mature enough to realize all right i i only should date if i'm wanting to get married and this sort of stuff well it probably helped that i had older siblings because then i had not just my parents telling me something but also siblings who you who I respected because sometimes you could see them make an ass of themselves <laughs> for years and then be like okay I, I don't need to do that <laughs> Sorry. yeah so you I I mean by being the youngest of four I mean and with big age gaps too I got to see um, my older siblings 
go through life ahead of me. They were like trailblazers, and then they always gave me advice. And um, also, I think being being raised in a religious home in a in a household of Christians, then we also had a grounding in more conservative values. And then as I became a t- teenager, um, 15, 16 is when I started to look more into politics and hear more about conservatism. And all of these ideas seemed to make sense and go hand in hand. And none of that was promoting a promiscuous lifestyle or having many partners. It was, you should get married, you should have children, you should try and be the best person you can be. I mean, there's Mm -hmm. plenty of names uh, of people that talk about this kind of stuff. Jordan Peterson um, on the trying to show men how to be the best version of themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, But lots of lots of speakers and cultural figures that not just family members, but plenty of people that I can look up to with the spread of the internet and you can the you can get so many ideas from other people. You just need to look in the right places. And I guess being raised in the religious family and having those people around me that I did helped cultivate that. So your advice then is to young people is if they meet someone who meets their criteria of what a mate should be like, and they don't let age get in the way, basically. Get yeah. married. Yeah. yeah. And, and be intentional about finding someone that you want to marry. Yeah. And not and just not just dating to have fun, yeah. but dating to find a spouse. Yeah, and look in the right places. I mean, <laughs> that's true too. You're gonna find like a good like we found each other on like a, like a Christian yeah a mission equal. trip. We already knew that we all had like really like minded beliefs. It's a great place to meet. There's been so many. It's like quit going to the bar. Go yeah. on yeah, that's, a, that's, play, curate your peep your possible spi- spouses S- spices. Yeah. You want to find a good person? You you're not look gonna. In the right place. Yeah, you look in the right place. They're not gonna be at the bar or other. And you can places. ask the people in around you, like the older the people who are older than you that are around you that you respect. Like, do you know other believers my age? And. I mean, yeah, go to whatever religious gathering you have, too. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, exactly right. Look in the right places. The bar is probably not... It's unlikely that you're going to find another person who agrees with you on your worldview and your religious views at the bar. Yeah, yeah you guys... So, I mean, Created Equal does this every summer. So if anyone else wants to meet other young people who are believers. There's been a lot of couples who've been formed through this. <laughs> that's true. Which I'm sure that's how it is with just many churches and tour groups. You meet people who are like-minded and yeah. Absolutely. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you guys got married. So people shouldn't, all right, let's talk about, this just came to my mind. Let's talk about college and, and, and Thomas, you decided not to go to school, not to go to college. Yeah. And another intentional decision, maybe because, partially because of you, witnessing your older siblings. I mean, both of you kind of made that decision. What are your thoughts about that? When I was a lot younger, uh, and I was being homeschooled, I just assumed that I would go to college because that seems just like the trajectory. And yeah. that is the trajectory that is laid out for people today. It's like, oh, that's the next step. You have to do that. Yeah. And it's everybody asks you, like, where, where? do you go? They don't even where? say, are you? They're like, yeah. where are you going well, to college? Yeah. It's not are, it's where and when. Um, so what higher institution is going to meddle in your like mental framework? And your 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 outlook on life for years and years. Right. Sorry. <laughs> I I think well there's two there's two reasons for it. Um one is yeah, the what you were what you were getting at right there is that I think that the college system has is become indoctrination. It, it's a indoctrination center. I mean how many how many people do you know who were raised religious and then they go to college and that's where they lose their faith because they are purposefully trying to do that that's one of the goals is is to uh, 
is to beat that out of people. Now, I don't think that if I went, that would happen to me. I did take some post-secondary classes through high school at a, but it was not, it was at a local, it was at a local Christian college. Um, but you didn't know what exactly you wanted to go to school for. Right. That was, pre that was the main reason. I mean, yeah. that, the first reason I mentioned was something that I think is very important for a mm -hmm. lot of people. I don't think I, I mean, I don't know. I don't think I would have fallen off all of my convictions if I yeah. went, but I didn't know what I wanted to go study, and I thought it was a very unwise decision to get in a bunch of debt for something undefined. But there's a lot of people that do go just because they feel the pressure by It's family, like, that's what you like, have to do. And yeah, so many that's, people go that's the next step. With, without their major in mind. They're just like, oh, I'm just going to start going and getting into a lot of debt and like having fun mm -hmm. with the other kids my age. <laughs> But it didn't seem wise, and I mean, I'm not necessarily opposed to getting a degree in something if I feel like I need it, but when I don't have that ironed out before I commit, then I think that would be unwise. Yeah, I think, I think you guys made the right decision. And yeah. Fanny never wanted to go. <laughs> I, yeah, I, my desire was just to get married and have a family, so why would I go and, I mean, that... Maybe that's not doing both. Yeah, well, maybe that wouldn't happen. Maybe like for some people, that's not what God laid out for their lives. Sure. But when I had this other job opportunity to just do what I knew was very effective, which was help um, people see the truth of abortion versus going to more school, it just seems so clear. Like oh, I could serve the Lord right now, and I can see the fruit of this work and then once i find the right guy i can just get married and continue to do this work we're not promised tomorrow yeah. i mean it's important that people all all the people that hear uh, uh, us realize that if they can do work now for yeah they need to do it and just in you doing that look you 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 found the rest of your life you found the rest of the things you needed to do you are a wife and now you're about to have a baby so you to be have... able to fill that role too, of being a mother. Mm -hmm. Do you have any thoughts you want to say to your peers, Gen Z people? Like something we already mentioned was dating intentionally. Um, figuring out why you believe what you believe. Uh, getting your your religious view and your your world view kind of mapped out so that you understand it so that you mm -hmm. can find out what you're looking for in a partner because that's something you wouldn't want to you wouldn't want to get married to someone who doesn't who's very different from you religiously or politically because you don't want to be unequally yoked I mean that's a biblical idea um, you wouldn't want to be unequally yoked so you need to, that's something you're doing when you're dating, is you're finding out what this person believes and where you guys align, where you don't align, and you're not going to align on everything. Mm -hmm. But if you align on the things that are most dear to both of you, then that, that's what you want to do. That would be important. Mm -hmm. And your main purpose isn't to be happy. Like, we're not guaranteed happiness in this life. Our, our, our purpose is to glorify God and to be obedient to Him. And I think following Torah is a great example of that. It's when you realize that he sacrificed everything for you. And Torah is the response to that. It's, the, it's, it's, it's being obedient that maybe things don't always go to plan or <laughs> you don't know the plan, really. You just have these hopes and desires. Um, so when... when if you're not able to find a spouse or it, it just hasn't happened yet, the the purpose is still to be obedient and to be faithful to God because he uh, gave you everything. He, he's giving you eternal life. So, but also those principles in the meantime, you should be um, trying to find a spouse in, in, in good places and, and you should have standards and and, you know, try to live life 
for for Christ and whatever comes along with that is a, is a blessing. Okay, should people in your generation or any generation just be TikToking all the time? And is there a place for that? Is there not a place? Not just TikTok, Instagram, all this crap. Like, is it good? Is it bad? Now that you've seen some of this, like, what's your advice for for young people and their consumption of social media and their usage of their cell phone? Okay. There's pros and cons to everything, just like the internet. Um, the internet has done so many amazing things that it's hard to even realize mm -hmm. like the difference it's made. But at the same time, it's also caused the, uh, it's caused internet porn to be everywhere mm -hmm. in everyone's pocket. So that has been a very big negative. So that's a huge con of the internet. And that's something that is, that has to be fought, uh, nationwide and especially in the religious community, but it is prevalent everywhere. It's mm -hmm. like 80% of men are have viewed porn in the last week or something like that. I'm going to have to double check the stats on that, but it's extraordinarily just, just ex high. Exposure to pornography, to and young it children. Young. Yeah. Where it's not just the internet, it's, it is social media. It's like that is like pornography yeah so. even if you're not looking at hardcore pornography even just being on these social media platforms especially for men there's mm -hmm. a lot of what's now deemed acceptable which is um on all these platforms it's not censored material is basically soft corn pornography mm -hmm. soft corn pornography yeah so. um so there's risks for sure i mean you can curate what comes up in your feed to the most part if you're meticulous but, I mean, that's a very big danger, especially for men. Yeah. Um, also, your relationship, just being on your cell phone constantly, which yeah, we still own cell too. phones. We, we have iPhones, so we're guilty of this. Um, not that we practice this perfectly, but it's definitely something that can distance you from your spouse or from your family or friends. And I think the, the more we get away from it, the better, the more beneficial the relationship is going to be. Yeah. But it can be a tool that is yeah, of course very the, helpful. Of course, the pros are that you can disseminate information quickly and easily across mm -hmm. um, hundreds of thousands of miles. You can talk to your friend in another <laughs> country. Um, so, I mean, there's wonderful things too, but it should, I guess, you should probably find limits for yourself and then stick to them. Yeah, and our generation is very different from previous generations because we grew up. With we it. grew up with it. It was it wasn't like we very little of our lives where did we have just silence. We now we always have a phone buzzing and interrupting our daily life. It's like we like your kids normal. and our kids aren't gonna know a life where there wasn't cell phones constantly. But if we can try and limit that for at least our kids, that'd be really great. Yeah, it's like a it will suck up time and yeah. everything if you let it. That's your probably your biggest problem with it. It's just that you get on your phone to do one thing and then you're doing a bunch of other stuff and you wasted, you know. Yeah. I, I hate when that happens too. It's just like, well, why was I on it for so long? And so for me personally, I just have, I just hardly ever use social media because of that. Um, the thing I do spend a lot of time on, it feels like I've talked to other men too, where, where YouTube is a big time suck. Because mm -hmm. even if it's not like Instagram or Facebook, I mean, it can also just suck up as much time. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you can be useful. You can be learning how to do things, but still there's plenty of wasted time. I feel like on my end on YouTube. Do you think that there should be a test that young people need to take before they're allowed to have a cell phone not not like you know legally with the government but just best practices i think you should not be giving your child a, any type of internet connected device um just because of the immense danger that lies there mm -hmm. with go ahead no, yeah. seeing bad stuff that they're not yeah, supposed yeah. to see how, how, how what, what should men do you said 80% of them are looking at porn on their phones or their computers what what should they do should they have a 
like friend that they talk to about this should they talk to their wife about this should they should they have a partner that they that they uh, account accountability yeah, well, person should be talking to somebody but there's a lot of strategies you can you can implement i mean one thing is you can try and find out how to put blocks on all your devices at your household so that you can't get to the you can't get to that content but usually there's workarounds and but there's also other uh software which um just records all activity and then if anything like if anything's flagged it will send an email to somebody so that would be whoever whatever accountability accountability partner you set up yeah definitely have an accountability partner um, i think that's i think there's one necessary. called covenant eyes it's probably super hard with with social media though because how could you know i mean i would assume yeah i don't know the necessarily the details of the software about how it always detects stuff but yeah there's plenty you're right there's plenty of stuff even on the quote-unquote normal platforms like instagram yeah even if you're not that is seeking it out it's there no good it's it's on your feed and it's... sometimes your feed will tr <laughs> it'll try and give you stuff that is provocative or even advertisements sometimes are provocative mm -hmm. it's, it's for clicks it's for like views it's, i don't do social media at all on my phone and i mean this that wasn't the reason but i i can see that that's a good reason just because you know now i am back on x because i because you know i want to i just love that elon is controlling it yes. but even on x even like the few times i've gone on there you see crazy stuff yeah. just pop up and so i'm sure it's like that on tiktok and all those too yeah. but that's yeah. It, I don't know. Yeah, it seems like you just have to be, you have to be completely honest with yourself and with whoever your accountability partner is in order to eliminate that from your life. Because I feel like once you do, you're on the other side of it, quote unquote. And it's like, it's not that much of a problem anymore, or it's not a problem at all. But I know that, that a lot of men probably watching this aren't at that situation. So they, they got to, this is an important thing. Just so that people can, men can have self-respect. And I mean, Andrew Tate talks about this. I know you guys, you hate that I bring up Tate all the time, but he talks about how men, it's, it's detrimental for men to be looking at porn. I mean, it, one, if you're not married already, it, it like, t it removes some of the impetus you have and some of the like motivation just to, to go find a woman that's a big problem yeah the biggest thing is accountability partner you have to have that and there, there's no there's nothing wrong with that or any shame in that because we're all human like men should have accountability partners when it comes to that stuff and do they really need social media do you really need social media? <laughs> delete yourself. your social media <laughs> destroy your cell phones and quit looking at porn what's wrong with you uh, it's it's definitely one of the biggest problems I think that our nation faces and it's always it's usually left unsaid. It's mm. always under the surface and people don't want to talk about it, but it is so prolific. It is in I'm sure it's in almost every church there's there's people that are dealing with this struggle because now it is so readily available unlike at any other time in history. I mean, it's like porn has zero po positives. They're they're the 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 people that are enacting it and it's being filmed it's bad for them on many levels and, yeah. and there's sexual trafficking like, all involved with a lot of that as well Absolutely. so that's a bad the results are bad it's bad for the 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 marriage the family everyone everyone loses with porn it should totally be illegal yeah. i don't know why it's yeah. not it would be beneficial to society if it were I don't think that's going to happen. And usually these platforms are profiting off of child pornography too, which is just so repulsive that and it's like when you when you're supporting a platform that houses that material too. I mean, you may not think about it if you're not using it, but I mean, you're supporting them just by being there. Yeah, and you're su And yeah. and you're those women, those women's lives are yeah. usually being ruined. Yeah, and it kind of ties into the abortion thing cuz if you're supporting the pornography oh, yeah, industry, it, it definitely fuels abortions. Yeah. So if you are a Christian who has a problem, who, yeah, who, yeah, you're, and you're against abortion, you're kind of contributing to it. Yeah. And think, think guys, think on your sins.
Think on your sins. <laughs> All right, last thing. Anything else you guys want to mention or talk about that I didn't ask? Anything you want anyone out there to hear? Get married and have lots of children. <laughs> and <laughs> stay true to your spouse. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. That's really good. Do you, is there anywhere you want people to find you online? And if so, where is that? And if you don't want them to find you, then just say, leave me, leave me alone. <laughs> like, you can find Create Equals organization at createequal.org. And we have a YouTube channel. We show, this is probably really cool, if, what we've been talking about today. We actually wear GoPros and record the video or interactions we have and post the videos on YouTube. So you can see how someone started out really angry and by the end of the conversation, like how the person was able to calm them down. So th and there's, there's a bunch of different types of videos on there. So you can actually see how they changed their mind. Um, and then we're on Facebook. <laughs> Go, go at least to createdequal.org, everybody, and look look at some of this stuff. See Vanny interacting with people. See her diffuse the situation. And support her. Support Created Equal. Um, they're doing good work that you guys aren't probably doing. Most of us aren't doing. It sucks to do. It's hard to do. I've said I would go do one of these things. I still have not done it. So I'm planning to, I'm planning to at least go out there at once yeah and you should find out wherever you're living if there's an abortion clinic near you because yeah. even if you don't feel equipped to talk to somebody directly just your presence outside of an abortion clinic can yeah. help uh deter women from going through with the action even if yeah. you're just there praying mm -hmm. um and if you're willing to talk to them i mean that would be great a lot of times they have escorts outside of the clinics that will try and hurry the women into the building without talking yeah. to you but um, that is always needed. And who else would be out be there wonderful. besides the Christians? That's something to ask yourself. Why, why would anyone else be out there trying to help these children? Except it, it falls on us. So go out there and do it <laughs> or support someone who is doing it. I think. Yeah, because we are we are the one we're the last stand here, man. You know, for the most part. So we got to do our part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you both for taking the time to do this. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. We loved it. It was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, adios. <laughs>